Omni Movement is coming in Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and I think it's safe to say that people haven't realized just how radically different this is going to overhaul how Warzone plays as a game. And this has been confirmed now. We know for a fact that Omni Movement is part of the new Warzone experience coming to us later this year. There is a lot to unpack about these changes. To start with, for those of you who are unaware, Omni Movement will allow you to dive, slide, and sprint in pretty much any direction. And there's some really solid clips during the reveal of just how crazy that is. Not only will you be able to dive behind cover, you'll also be able to dive backwards, slide backwards, and instigate fights in entirely new ways that we haven't seen before. And this will actually be solving one of the biggest problems that the Warzone movement system has in terms of outplaying your opponent at close range, which we'll talk about in this video today. The biggest thing that I haven't seen discussed online yet is how Omni Movement is going to greatly increase the skill gap in close range engagements and gunfights. Now, it's fairly universal in Call of Duty at this moment in time. The jump shotting is more preferable to drop shotting at close range due to how aim assist works, especially around the sort of 0 to 5 to 8 meter sort of range. Anything beyond that and drop shotting becomes preferable because the aim assist doesn't latch on as heavily and there's a bit more of a gap in between you and your opponent that means that they won't accidentally hit headshots as you go into the drop shot stance. And generally speaking, the close range skill gap is very much on a basis of being able to slide around your opponents and utilize either a drop shot or a jump shot in order to create the largest TTK differential between you in a close range gunfight. But this is all completely changing when the new version of Warzone releases. To start with, you're going to be able to dive backwards, which is going to mitigate the problem of being shot in the head whilst drop shotting, whilst also creating distance. Meaning that diving backwards could end up getting your opponent landing feet shots on you whilst you're landing headshots on them. It also hypothetically means that if you dive sideways in a close range engagement, somebody could go from torso shots to lower leg or lower limb shots, meaning that we're talking about a fairly radical jump in how close range fights are going to unfold. I really do feel as though diving backwards is going to become a huge part of the game. I also feel as though people who are capable of using these diving mechanics in those close range gunfights are going to massively benefit from the new movement system in Warzone and see a great increase in the number of gunfights and engagements that they'll win. And sprinting in any direction is also a mild benefit as well. Everything about close range engagements in Warzone at this moment in time is about creating windows for you to attack your opponent, plate for yourself or reload for yourself, and more maneuverability options are going to give you more windows to do that. The next big thing is cover mechanics. Now, often one of the largest principles of winning or losing a gunfight in Warzone is down to the initial contact that you make with an opponent. Often, some good players will be able to get the drop on an opponent, catch them with a certain amount of plate damage, and end up winning the gunfight. That's completely changing as well. With the ability to dive in any direction and slide in any direction, almost every fight becomes that little bit more complex now. Because if you don't necessarily get the damage you were initially aiming for, there'll be many more options for an opponent to get into cover than there were before. A good example I like to use of explaining just how radical a difference this is, is that if you see an enemy running down a road and they happen to pass various doors and alleyways of different buildings, there is a very high likelihood that in the future of Warzone, they could simply dive to the left or dive behind them if they end up taking contact that they weren't expecting. It's actually often the process of somebody having to redirect their movement which gets them killed out in the open most of the time, as opposed to them being far away from cover. So if somebody can quickly reshuffle their movement in a different direction and find cover more rapidly, you're going to see people surviving those initial engagements more often than they were before, or having longer, more long-winded gunfights because they were given options to respond. The next thing that lots of people haven't really touched on is how the automatic mechanics in Warzone are going to change quite drastically too. As we saw in the overall Call of Duty Direct production, there will be the ability to automatically move around the map by mantling certain objects or sliding under certain objects that we've seen in game. And it likely means that this is going to lead to a more unified design of how certain things are placed in the game. At the moment in Warzone, you can find walls of various different heights that some you can get over, some you can't, various obstacles and gaps in walls that some you can get through and some you can't. But when you have an automated system that responds to these automatically, you need to set the general principles for those from a coding standpoint to be the same. 
So gaps in the walls or certain heights and verticalities of different walls would have to be a universal thing in order for this automated input system to work. So this should generally make Warzone potentially more readable because it's going to show what walls people can and can't get over, what things people can jump over and can't jump over or slide under. Now, for me personally, I always tend to lean towards turning off any kind of movement automation, but considering all of this is going to have to be coded into the game anyway and work with the map, it's something to bear in mind. Things could become drastically more readable. We also have the new mechanics of corner rounding and being able to shoot open doors. Now, corner rounding is really interesting because it does hypothetically hide your character's body behind cover more than traditional rounding of corners that we currently have in Warzone. So players who utilize that a lot whilst attacking and defending certain positions will likely see a pretty high return on how frequently they win their gunfights because their bodies will be more occluded by the physical cover that they're using. So all of these little micro adjustments, corner rounding, the omnidirectional movement, are really creating larger gaps in engagements where success can be found or success can be lost, which is kind of the core formula and loop for Warzone's gameplay anyway. And I can very much imagine a future where corner rounding becomes a viable strategy for holding certain positions. I'm a big fan of being able to shoot open doors as well. I think doors are often used as a really solid way of hiding people in solo experiences. And generally in Warzone, there are instances where I felt it was handy to have a door open before nading in. So being able to shoot a door open and then using utility rather than having to use utility to open said door is going to be a nice little strategy and a further increase in the overall skill gap that we've seen in Warzone that will give players more options. One of the biggest takeaways from this in terms of the omnidirectional movement that I've noticed is that we're probably going to see a bit of a reliance and resurgence more on utilities than we have before, especially utilities that manage to deal damage to an area. Now, as somebody who's fairly confident that I'll be able to use the omnidirectional movement to create larger gaps, win more fights, and generally be more problematic to my opponents, it's worth mentioning that the only way to counteract people being shifty on their feet and getting into cover heavily is by basically lombarding them with various kinds of utilities and lethals. Lethals like the thermite, which cause a slowdown, uh, stun grenades, which cause a slowdown, flash grenades, which make things a little bit more confusing for people, are going to be really important going forward. And I think it's really critical that Warzone strikes a balance on not allowing people to stow extra grenades and lethals in the future. Because the last thing you want with omnidirectional movement is for all of it to be counteracted by the fact that somebody has put six stun grenades in their pocket. Like I mentioned with the ability to dive backwards and drop shot people in new and very different ways, you're going to see a general broadening of the windows in which gunfights and fights against other teams take place, where things that previously would provide you an inch of an advantage, like getting the drop on somebody or using a lethal, may now possibly provide you a fairly major advantage. Something like a grenade now, in a world where people can get out of cover and get into cover faster, could likely be the deciding factor in whether or not you win a fight versus before where things were a little bit more linear and on rails. I'm really excited to see how this goes. I'm also interested to see how directional movement is going to be maintained and also slowed down. Naturally, the last thing you want is people diving every 0.01 second because we'd end up with a very frustrating movement system if that were the case. So overarchingly, pretty excited to see how things go. And I'm curious to see what your thoughts and feelings are down below. Let me know what you think about the upcoming Omni movement system for Warzone. As always, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.